So folks, I finally got my Pine phone. There it is. Took a long time. Courtesy of USPS. And now we're gonna open it and see what the heck is in here. I ordered this on November 15th or so. One of the first to order it. So we shall see. Nice simple box. Uh, I know it doesn't come with a charger. I believe it's just a phone. So we will see if that's correct. Okay, so that is it. That is the uh, way it's packaged. It has a little thing there. And let's see what's in here. Okay, so there's nothing in there. Everything is in this little package. Tightly wedged in there. I guess it doesn't shake. Okay, so there. There's the full phone. It's kind of the size of a OnePlus One, or actually, uh, yeah, taller than an iPhone. Looks taller than an iPhone 10, 11 Pro. And a cable. That's it. That's all there is. A USB C USB C cable. So I happen to have the USB C in here so I can plug it in and actually check it out. So I already made very nice. A little heavier than um like a, you know, like a Nexus or even a OnePlus One, a little bit, it feels very, very solid. It feels very solid. Now, do I need to wipe it with uh, something uh, for coronavirus? I don't know. I probably won't bother with that. So, okay, what I'm gonna do now is I made several SD cards ready for this. So I'm gonna charge it for a moment and then we're gonna go uh, check out a few things. One of the things I'm gonna check is how the back cover opens. We wanna check out the dip switches for the kill switches. We wanna also check out the issue of how you put an SD card. Some people have said it's a bit difficult to frequently exchange SD cards if you're gonna switch between the different OS possibilities for the phone. So we're gonna check that out later in this video. So for the moment, Let's start with this. There is the Pine Phone. I'm gonna put the specs of the Pine Phone on the video description. So for people who have not checked this out before, this is the first Linux phone for me. Uh, it's one of the first Linux phones. The, uh, the first one to be released was the Librem 5. So there's the phone as it looks when it comes out of the box. So I'm first gonna peel off the cellophane cover. We don't need that. And uh, before I do anything else, I just want to do a comparison here. And I want to compare it to an iPhone 10 right there. You can see that the Pine phone is bigger than the iPhone 10. I'm going to say it's uh, close to the size of an iPhone 11 Max. If you look at that. And here's just for comparison, there's a Nexus 5, which is smaller than an iPhone 10 and there you go you can see the comparison still it's not bulky still a reasonably sized phone 
Okay, now what I'm gonna do now is plug it in and that's the first thing we're gonna do here. I we're, we're not gonna open it up yet. We're gonna plug it in and see what happens. And it's booting now to PostMarket OS. This should be the factory test program. And there's a factory test. And I'm going to do the automatic test over there. And it's going to go through that. And I expect that it's going to fail on RTL, which is the Wi-Fi. It's also going to fail on EG25, which is the modem, the cell modem. That's if you do this without opening up the back cover. I'm going to fast forward this since it takes a bit of time. Okay, so there we go, and it failed on the Wi-Fi and the modem. Okay, so now I'm going to unplug this, and we're going to open up the back cover. To open up the back cover, there's a slot for your finger right at this corner. And then you're able to open it so it's uh, fairly easy so there's the back and I'm gonna remove the battery and there's the plastic tab that keeps the battery from being used so I'm gonna take that off Okay, just so you understand the process here, the battery needs to be pushed in. There's a slot in this corner. Some people have had problems with the slot here. So just make sure that you put it in before you push it down. Okay, don't just, don't just, uh, don't just, you know, land it unevenly because there's a tab there. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is put on the SD card. So here's my SD card in here. And I'm gonna put it into the top slot. There's a legend in there that says the top slot is for the SD card. That means the lower slot is for the SIM card. Okay, so now we're gonna put the battery back in. Again, remember there's a little notch in there so I'm gonna make sure that it, I push it back before I push it down so there you go now somebody complained that it's pretty hard to put in the SD card without removing the battery so just uh, just so I can test this yeah I don't think you can I think you have to remove the battery there's no there's no way to do that but it's actually pretty easy I don't, I don't see what the problem is, as long as you, yeah. I don't see any issue there. Okay, now let's talk about the dip switches, because the dip switches is one of the best features of these Linux phones. But the problem is, the dip switches are a lot smaller than what it appeared in the earlier pictures. At least, you know, if you if you have no no reference, you can see that from my finger that is very small. So the only way I can actually flip those switches is with a sharp tool like this. So so this is not something that you can easily do in a mobile way. So that would. Put an advantage on the Librem 5 because the Librem 5 has the switches on the side. But at least you can do it. So there it is. That's the dip switches on the Pine phone. So that is not as convenient as the one on the Librem 5. Okay, so, so all we're going to do now is put on the cover and then we're going to boot it and see if it boots with the SD card I have on there. And, and at, at the moment I have a bunch to touch.
and let's see what happens and there it is that's uh, booting a bunch of touch there we go you can see a few problems still on the display there there's some problems there with the display using Wayland mirror with Wayland okay so that is booting let me just go in quickly Okay, so nothing displayed on the front screen there. So a little flickery there, it's not, not too smooth yet. I, I don't think it's using the acceleration yet and there's still some, some issues on the display. So this is on Ubuntu Touch and I know certain features are not running yet. So we're gonna wait for that. In the meantime, I'm not going to boot with Fosh. Okay, now we're booting with Fosh. And there you go. It doesn't have a lot of stuff in here, but let's just check out. There's a dialer. Okay, recent. Okay, so it looks uh, looks functional here. Let me just uh, just get the feel of just how fast the display is moving up and down. Okay, it could be smoother on the display. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to now try Plasma Mobile. Okay, now I'm booting Plasma Mobile. Okay, so Plasma Mobile started on Postmarket OS. There's not a lot here. So we have to find some applications later on, but just uh, checking the screen and seeing how fast it moves. This one is smoother than Fosh. Okay, so that's just an initial view, and then we'll go into a deeper examination of this since I just got this today. So I just want to get you a quick view here, and we'll delve into this in a much deeper way. Okay, so there we have it. There's the Pine Phone, and I showed you Fosh, Plasma, Mobile, and Ubuntu Touch. And I don't have any problems with the way it's built. Looking at the build quality, it looks very good. It looks very nicely finished. There are no issues. Sometimes I wonder, though, if they might sell a replacement to the back cover. It's, it's a thin plastic, so developers are going to be opening and closing the case frequently might break it so I'm wondering if they're going to be selling a replacement cover to this in case but other than that it looks like it's in pretty good shape now there are some issues as I showed you on some of the UIs that are available on the Pine phone at the moment they're not done yet and just from my knowledge here I know that many of the things that are not implemented in the UI actually work on the command line for example Wi-Fi Someone even proved that you can make a modem call from the command line. Doing the switches, the sensors and everything works on the command line. Doing the camera works on the command line. At least the, uh, the rear camera works with the command line, not the front facing one. And so it's just a matter of time for these to get implemented by the UI. The UI has to be modified to call the proper commands on the command line. These are just bash scripts 
that control some of this. Now, some of the major issues that I think will have to be thought about relate to timeout. So the phone, it's a phone, so the, the phone goes on standby. So when the phone goes on standby, a lot of these drivers don't know how to react because this is not like a standard A64 SOC. This is a phone and phone goes on standby. When it goes on standby, and then the, the, the various features need to be able to power down and power up again, like the Wi-Fi, the modems, and so on. So that has to be figured out. I don't think that's been figured out yet. So those are some of the issues that I expect will come out later on. So again, this is just a beginning view. There's still also problems with the display drivers, especially with Ubuntu Touch. I think they're working on that with the uh, mirror support for Wayland, which is being premiered on a Pine phone. So the Nexus 5 uses the mirror display server the Pine phone uses the Wayland implementation of Mir, so that's a new thing for about to touch. So, and I don't know. I looked at it uh, just briefly, and I do not know if it's using graphics acceleration. It didn't seem like it was using graphics acceleration yet. So we're gonna see how that works out. So a lot of these are gonna happen. It's not gonna happen instantly, but it's gonna happen fairly quickly since I don't think there are many technical issues other than just work to be done, which are just mechanical steps. So I think it'll be figured out fairly quickly. So there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe to this channel so you can hear more about the Pine Phone, one of the Linux phones available today. And thanks for watching. Okay.